Hey guys, welcome back for another video. Today we're going to take a look at this Arillic S10 streamer. This is a real basic entry level streamer slash DAC. Now, who this is for is really going to depend on exactly what equipment you're dealing with. This is basically something to use with your phone or tablet or computer in some cases and play music and stream audio. Now, a lot of these features, and I'll go through some of them here, there's been a lot of reviews of this over the years. I'm not gonna go through all the nitty gritty details because I'm more concerned about how does it sound. Um, a lot of these features are kind of duplicated these days by a simple Amazon Echo. I mean, let's face it. So you've got all the normal connections here. We've got power, USB dongle. It's an RCA only out. We've got our input cable here, so you can go from a standard headphone jack into the unit. Here's your wall wart. And we've got a basic remote control. We'll take a look at that. Standard features on that. And then the box itself. Now what this is doing is taking a digital signal from Bluetooth or Wi-Fi in various types of connections. We'll go over that. Or direct from USB. You can plug in an external drive and play your files that way and convert it into audio using the RCA outs here into whatever you're gonna play, either an active speaker or an older receiver or a older analog only preamp and amp combination, something like that. This is something for people with older stuff because let's face it, in the last five or six years at least, pretty much every single processor in AVR out there has this built in. You can connect via Bluetooth, and AirPlay to anything that's remotely modern. And that's what this is doing. It's giving that functionality to that older stuff. And you just plug this into one of the analog inputs in the back. And then boom, you're up to modern standards. Now, this is only 80 bucks. So it is very entry level as far as what DAC is in here. I might open it up, see if I can see the chip and see what's in here, but I can almost guarantee you it's either a Burr Brown or a copy of a Burr Brown. You've got various qualities of the DAC chips. That's the digital to analog converter, and it is what makes the sound sound the way it is. The biggest differences in my experience, and I've gone from the basic stuff like this, the so cheap Burr Browns and you know $200 AVRs over the years, all the way up now where I've got a you know, $6,000 processor with a top of the line Sabre ESS DAC, what it gives you is distinct levels in sound quality. The image, the separation, the sound stage, the depth, the holography of it. It's Does it take it from just sounding good to take it to sounding like somebody's in the room? Does it give you that back of the neck hair raising experience that your brain gives you when your ears are telling you one thing, there's somebody in the room and your eyes are telling you something else. There's nobody in the room. That's the difference between a low and high quality DAC in my experience. So I don't expect anything other than the basics out of this. It's going to sound neutral, I would assume. And that's about it. I'm not expecting any great sound stage, but we're going to hook it up and we're going to test it out and see what we get. And here's the remote. You can see all the standard stuff. Controls all the functions of the device. Basic EQ settings, selecting through the different inputs, basic jog and volume and power. Mute, that's about it. Nope, they don't give you batteries. All right, just going through the first time setup here. You plug it in, it automatically goes into Bluetooth pairing mode. You fire up the app, which I'll talk about a little bit here in a second and it will find the device, connects it to your Wi-Fi. You basically just give it the password, automatically connects to your Wi-Fi, and now it's automatically uploading or downloading a firmware update. Now, one big drawback, at least so far in this app, it is locked to portrait mode on the tablet, and that sucks. I hate it when apps do that. I primarily use my tablet in landscape mode, and that means I probably won't be using the tablet. I'll just stick to the phone. So here's what I'm gonna do. As soon as this finishes updating, I'm gonna plug it into the analog input on my processor. Now, just to be clear, I am not in any way going to be comparing this to my $6,000 processor and medium quality DAC. And believe me, 
that doesn't get you a high quality DAC. You're talking 10, 15, $20,000 for the top of the line DACs, which is ridiculous to me, but that's the way it is. For this entry level stuff, this, ooh, that's dusty. This is what I'm going to be directly comparing it to because these are really in the same bracket as far as what they do. They are basic DACs, basic streamers with basic connectivity. Now there's a few differences. This, you know, it's 20 to 25 bucks for a Echo Dot. Other Echo devices do the same thing. They've got pretty much the same internal components. You've got the output there for analog audio. It also has Bluetooth out, so you can connect it to speakers and whatnot. That's how I use it. Uh, not this one, but another one I have in my office to my computer. And that's about it. Now, this has voice control, but this gives you more connectivity features and a remote control. So, you know, there's minor differences there. But they both work with all the same music services. And just to be clear, when they're advertising and talking about all the music services that this works with, with the exception of Spotify, that is, they have nothing at all to do with the devices, with the hardware. That's only talking about the app. The app is what connects to your music services. It's just streaming Bluetooth or Wi-Fi to the device. These have absolutely no idea, with the exception of Spotify, what's playing. Now, I say with the exception of Spotify because there's a couple ways that music services work with devices. The easy way is just using, like I said, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, AirPlay, and that uses the phone or the tablet or the computer or whatever you're working with to do all the processing. That's downloading from the cloud, processing the signal, sending the signal out, and these just become basically like Bluetooth headphones. You know, they're just output devices. They're not doing any of the work. But another way to do it is called Connect Services. Spotify Connect, Amazon Music Connect, Tidal Connect. What these do is offload the processing to whatever the unit is, and then it's downloading the music and it's doing the processing and your tablet or phone is just a remote control. So the difference is with the direct streaming, the phone's doing all the work, it uses more battery. You have to be in range because there's a constant connection between the phone or tablet and your device. But with the connect services, the phone's just basically saying play, pause, next, whatever. You can look stuff up and tell it what to do but you don't have a constant connection. So the battery lasts a lot longer. You don't have to be in range. You can turn your phone off and it's still playing because it's direct from the device. But this only has Spotify Connect built in. And note, it does not have any of the high res audio options for any of the services. And as far as Amazon goes, uh, they don't have any Connect services built in. Uh, as far as I know to these Echo Dots, so it's all direct through the app, so. All right, we look like we're updated. Let's go ahead and connect up. Okay, we're all connected. I'm logged into my Tidal account and I've been listening for a little bit. I've got some more to do. I've got a lot of test tracks here that I use for actual speaker setup and evaluation. I'm gonna run through some of my favorites, look for very specific things, things that I'm very familiar with. I know how sound on all different types of setups. So I'm gonna run through that. Then I'm gonna switch out for the Echo Dot I don't expect big changes, but you never know. I've never done a test like this with the Echo Dot. I only use those for just going to my computer system and around the house and that kind of thing, not any kind of serious listening. But it's here and it's just swapping a cable, so why not give it a shot? A um, couple things you need to know. There is a volume control on the app and that's what the remote does to the device. Just max that out. That is just a signal attenuator and you want maximum voltage going into whatever you're actually using for process or for volume control and amplification. So I'm using the volume on the processor and just keep the volume maxed. The volume control also works on the device, uh, the iPad or phone or whatever you're using, those do control it as well. And the app is actually pretty nice. Besides being locked into portrait mode, I don't have any complaints about it. It looks like a very decent app. It pulls in the artwork, same as Tidal. It doesn't have all the stuff of the individual actual service apps, but that's not expected. What it has, though, functions absolutely flawlessly, and it's the same as pretty much anything else out there. So it works. That's about the best you can say. <laughs> okay, listening done. Here are my completely subjective results. There is no point in putting anything like this as far as audio on YouTube because you are not gonna hear the difference, number one. 
Number two, it's all copywritten and you wouldn't be able to hear it anyway. But here's the bottom line. Comparing this, first of all, to the Echo, which is really close feature and hardware wise. Sound comparison, look, I'd be lying if I told you I could hear any difference. Subtle is the best I can say. They sound the same. They're not high end. Um, it sounds good. It sounds neutral and clear and crisp, but it just sounds like you're playing a music device. Nothing sounds convincingly live. It doesn't sound like there's somebody in the room. Good sound stage. I've got a little bit of spread beyond the speakers. Uh, just for clarification, playing through my good system here, it'll make the hair stand up on your arms because it sounds like somebody's in the room. Playing the right track with the right source, of course. Uh, this gives a two-dimensional sound stage. Everything is pretty much lined up as far as the sound between the speakers. Everything's just right here on a flat plane, you know. Uh, you can hear the instrument separation very well. There's no problem with that. A little bit of a, a phantom center. It doesn't really lock in like, you know, somebody's actually standing there like you're listening to them and it's coming from somebody's head. It's, it's more of a spread, you know. There's just a general sound in here, so... And there's no depth whatsoever. You can't hear anything. And some tracks you can hear if somebody's singing and they're standing up here with a mic and there's a drum kit back here and there's an upright bass over there. It's like you're looking at a stage. You know, those audio cues come to your ears very easily. And both of these devices and any kind of low-end act like this, uh, even going through hundreds of dollars into the entry-level or mid-range AVRs, that's pretty much all you get. You know, a nice flat soundstage. Uh, the good stuff goes all around the room. It actually wraps around your head on some tracks. It's like surround sound out of two speakers. And that's all I'm testing here. It's just stereo, straight two-channel stereo. So the app is actually really good. That is a huge difference. I would never want to use an Echo to be any kind of dedicated device to stream my music just for the inconvenience of the app. What I would do is use my app that comes with the service and just send it to the Echo over Bluetooth. You know, uh, it's the lowest quality possible signal, but it gets the job done as far as just making sound in a room. This obviously gives you AirPlay as well, which you can't do with the Echo. So it's a slightly on some combinations, depends on the track, better quality audio so that's a, a nice plus there and of course this gives you the better connectivity as far as using an external drive and you can wire it into your LAN if you don't want to use Wi-Fi so I mean that's nice that's no problem as far as remote goes I would absolutely never use it you can switch anything in the app if you need to and like I said you can use the volume controls on your device and that's pretty much the only thing you're going to be using play pause and volume and that's right here on the device that you're controlling it from and besides it's an IR remote so that means it has to be direct line of sight and eh, that's, that's dicey these days when you're putting stuff out of sight and out of mind so would I recommend it 80 bucks if you have an older system and it doesn't have built-in Bluetooth this is a fantastic option yes you could also just buy a Bluetooth dongle that's actually what I use in my office I go from the Echo to the Bluetooth dongle to my preamp on the computer because my computer preamp doesn't have built-in Bluetooth. But that's all it does. It's just a, a basic DAC, again. And it, again, sounds about the same. That's all I get out of my system in, the, uh, in my office is a flat sound stage and, and that kind of thing. But that's all it does. It doesn't have any kind of app and no support other than it works. You turn it on and it connects. This gives you more control and more options. And like I said, it has multi-room. However, I only have one device. Now, they say that they're multi-room, which allows you to play music synchronized, the same music on multiple devices, uh, works with any of their devices. This is the bare bones, basic starter model. And they've got a lot of other models with a lot of other features. Go to their website. I'll put the link down below. And let me know if there's something else that you would like me to cover from them. You know, there's not a lot to say about this one. It's a basic device that works well. That's it. Uh, but they do have a lot of other features that you might be interested in. So you know, let me know and maybe I can get one of those to review for you. For. Oh, what I was going to say about the multi-room, I can't test it with this. But I did test it because Echo also has multi-room audio. 
that sucks. <laughs> it's horrible. I have a lot of Echo devices around here and it doesn't perfectly sync them. It's not like Sonos with the whole house where it's it's like one giant speaker or even Apple. Oh no, no, there, it's like a, a Echo all around. I mean, there's one here, there's one in the garage, one in the office, uh, studio, bedroom, 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 got one for outside in there. You know, it, it's, it's horrible. It's not synced. So I don't know if this works any better, but I would hope so. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Catch you guys later.